but Keir Starmer's just reached the podium. He's going to speak. Let's hear what he has to say. Good afternoon. I have just returned from Buckingham Palace, where I accepted an invitation from His Majesty the King to form the next government of this great nation. I want you to thank the outgoing Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. His achievement as the first British Asian Prime Minister of our country the extra effort that that will have required should not be underestimated by anyone. And we pay tribute to that today. And we also recognize the dedication and hard work he brought to his leadership. But now our country has voted decisively for change, for national renewal, and a return of politics to public service. When the gap between the sacrifices made by people and the service they receive from politicians grows this big, it leads to a weariness in the heart of a nation, a draining away of the hope, the spirit, the belief in a better future that we need to move forward together. Now, this wound, this lack of trust, can only be healed by actions, not words. I know that. But we can make a start today with the simple acknowledgement that public service is a privilege and that your government should treat every single person in this country with respect. If you voted Labour yesterday, we will carry the responsibility of your trust as we rebuild our country. But whether you voted Labour or not, in fact, especially if you did not, I say to you directly, my government will serve you. Politics can be a force for good. We will show that. We've changed the Labour Party, returned it to service, and that is how we will govern. Country first, party second. Yet, if I'm honest, service is merely a precondition of hope, and it is surely clear to everyone that our country needs a bigger reset, a rediscovery of who we are, because no matter how fierce the storms of history, one of the great strengths of this nation has always been our ability to navigate away to calmer waters. And yet this depends upon politicians, particularly those who stand for stability and moderation as I do, recognizing when we must change course. For too long now, we've turned a blind eye as millions slid into greater insecurity. Nurses, builders, drivers, carers, people doing the right thing, working harder every day. Recognized at moments like this before, yet as soon as the cameras stop rolling, their lives are ignored. I want to say very clearly to those people, not this time. Changing a country is not like flicking a switch. The world is now a more volatile place. This will take a while. But have no doubt that the work of change begins immediately. Have no doubt that we will rebuild Britain with wealth created in every community. Our NHS back on its feet facing the future. Secure borders, safer streets, everyone treated with dignity and respect at work. The opportunity of clean British power, cutting your energy bills for good. And brick by brick, we will rebuild the infrastructure 
of opportunity. The world-class schools and colleges, the affordable homes that I know are the ingredients of hope for working people. The security that working-class families like mine can build their lives around. Because if I asked you now whether you believe that Britain will be better for your children. I know too many of you would say no. And so my government will fight every day until you believe again. From now on, you have a government unburdened by doctrine, guided only by the determination to serve your interests, to defy quietly those who have written our country off. You have given us a clear mandate, and we will use it to deliver change, to restore service and respect to politics, end the era of noisy performance, tread more lightly on your lives, and unite our country. Four nations standing together again, facing down, as we have so often in our past, the challenges of an insecure world committed to a calm and patient rebuilding. So, with respect and humility, I invite you all to join this government of service in the mission of national renewal. Our work is urgent, and we begin it today. Thank you very much. Well, that was Keir Starmer and his uh, first speech to the nation as our new Prime Minister. And a great greeting there from the, uh, the Labour Party members watching. I have to say, he was trying for some wonderful poetic, you know, Kennedy-esque prose, wasn't he, Matthew Laza? You're all former Labour advisor. I mean, it felt very flat to me. It felt very workable. Like, oh, let's put another metaphor in there. Let's do a lot of key words. I, I have to say... Didn't it didn't sing? It didn't soar as, as, as great oratory. Today. No, there was a whiff of Chat GPT about it, wasn't there? You know, <laughs> lead a, a speech of a new prime minister. Um, thought the first couple of minutes were good. Um, really, you know, uh, sort of with a bit of energy, and then he just got lost yeah. in the reeds of talking about the, yeah. the details of great British energy. It, the, Come on, <laughs> yeah, the first first half hour, and I lost it just off a bit. <laughs> Apparently, he says our country has voted decisively for change, and he says uh, uh, that there is a, a clear mandate. I think a lot of people weirdly would question that on the vote share. Uh, look, we're going to get your thoughts and more thoughts uh, coming up from our guests uh, coming up in just a few moments going to take a quick break while you uh, decide on this to give us a call get your thoughts in as well 0344 499 1000 this is talk the hope of common sense